Hi everyone, welcome to the shack or the back garden. Um, I've just been, well, not exactly repairing, refurbishing my RF Earth with uh, one of the biggest handheld solder irons you're ever likely to see. Um, the reason for it was because this RF Earth's been in now for um, probably 18 months and um, all the ra I've got about 30 radials that were attached to it basically via the clamp, the original clamp that came with the uh, earth rod from Screwfix um, and that was literally it and it's been left like that for as I said about 18 months but um, with that large soldering iron I actually managed to get the solder to run on the rod itself so um, I basically disconnected everything, got some sandpaper, cleaned the ends of the wires up. I was going to cut them, but it's going to take too long. But they cleaned up really nicely, actually. Literally bound them with tin copper wire together and then bound that to the earth rod and um, managed to get the solder to run. So it's now, I now have a really good uh, connection to the earth rod. I'm so, almost certainly much much better than they were connected um, previously and obviously with 18 months of weathering you know oxidization etc um i feel now that i've got a much much better connection from my earth rod to the radials um the um the actual earthing to my uh transformer this <laughs> I've managed to clamp now, I've cleaned the rod and clamped it with a Jubilee clip and actually managed to get some solder to run as well. Believe it or not, some of you will believe this, but for the past however many months, the earth cable to the transformer was actually uh, held on with this, which is basically a large crocodile clip from the end of a set of car jump leads. So, uh, but you know me, Harwell ARS, uh, nicknamed me the cable tie kid and that's the kind of the sort of thing that I used to do but um, as people keep bollocking me now that I've got a Kenwood TS990 I've got to up my game in terms of antenna matching units because apparently MFJ are no good um, uh, I won't say any more on that but uh, thanks for everybody who keeps watching the video um, it's had like nearly 7,000 views in two days so uh, it could be the most popular video of all time for Oxford shortwave log but anyway so now this is all looking very much more robust much better uh, electrical connection I'm sure I can't really measure it um, and um, I've just worked a station in Newcastle upon line uh, 59 plus which ain't too bad in the middle of the day on 80 meters particularly as propagation on 80 for a while now has been absolutely shite and that's a technical term so there you go i actually added an extra an additional radial actually which i've uh, so there's one more radial because adding radials certainly won't do any harm um and uh, i'm just going to go inside now and just check the uh match the auto match on the rig so uh, so there you go so that's my new uh, upgraded rf earth Go back inside. So 80 meters. Uh, uh, um, let's go off a bit. Right, I'm just going to uh, match on 80. No problem at all. This is with the uh, MFJ on uh, bypass. So all good. So there you go. So there you go. Um, but I feel a bit happier now. Um, I'm not using the MFJ uh, very much at all anymore. I don't need it anyway on top band and 80 meters. Um, it still works. So I mean, I have to be fair. You know, everyone keeps telling me from that video that I posted that. Uh, MFJs, mighty fine junk, and all this kind of stuff, and that might be—I don't know whether that's true or not. All I know is is that uh, on top band, it struggles above 120 watts TX power, um, which in theory it shouldn't do. Um, but everyone basically just keeps telling me, well, you know, how dare you put an MFJ on a rig like a TS990? So, uh, so I do get that, um, and uh, the Palstar. There's a two kilowatt PAL star. The AT2K has been recommended to me for like 700 quid. So, uh, you know, at some point I'll probably get one. Um, it's cheaper just to uh, use the rig and not use a matching unit at all if you can get away with it, which I think I can. Um, so uh, I'll probably just do that for a while. But um, 
Yeah, someone else had a go at me because I was using a £50 antenna with an £8,000 radio. So I had to go back at them and say, it's not a £50 antenna at all. It's a £5 antenna. Um, and it doesn't matter about the cost as long as it sort of performs okay, which I know it does. So it's, you know, it performs better than my G5RV, which cost eight times as much. So, um, yeah, there's... Uh, Ham radio is a funny thing. There's so much sort of voodoo engineering involved. Everybody knows a little bit. There's only a few people that seem to know a lot um, that are sort of very well educated, and everyone, but everyone's got very strong views and strong opinions, um, and uh, which is why I suppose uh, when I uploaded that video um, uh, regarding you know how ham radio equipment manufacturers seem to specify their kit, um, sort of seem to. Um, sort of polarised people really, you know, people were really, really dead against it or uh, were like, yeah, absolutely right, you know, and um, the, the weak link in your in your station is definitely your MFJ, which is probably right, but um, yeah, just it, all it's really done is made me sort of think a little bit harder about, you know, is my antenna in tip-top condition? Not is it any good, because I know it's, I know it's good, but is it in tip-top condition? Um, am I using, uh, you know, a matching unit? If I'm going to use an external matching unit, is it good quality, etc.? So it's as simple as that, really. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday afternoon as I uh, record this video, um, and uh, I'll look forward to uh, lots more comments and uh, lots more views on the channel. So uh, have a good one, 73.